This question is excellent, okay? I feel very fucking satisfied right now. It's not about me. It's about you. It's about getting your score up. But this is an excellent question for you in terms of packing the punch and some high-yield details. So rather than self-aggrandizing more or making this an even more uh, unnecessarily extended intro, why don't I just fucking start the explanation, all right? So we have this 25-year-old dude with confusion and a fever. He's an organ transplant recipient. Now, the point you need to extract, the fact that he's an organ transplant recipient is synonymous with immunosuppressed state for USMLE. I could have told you he's HIV positive. I could have said he's an IV drug user. I could have said he's on chronic steroids. Uh, but that's the point of this sentence. The fact that he has Wegener, aka granulomatosis polyangiitis, is irrelevant. It's just he's an immunosuppressed patient. That's what you need to extract out from this sentence. And he's got confusion and a fever. Confusion can mean encephalitis, okay, versus meningitis, which is classically stiff neck, uh, photophobia, even ophthalmoplasia. However, uh, or I should say, when we think of encephalitis for USMLE, especially in immunocompromised patients, could be herpes, okay? Um, but our we have a mucocarmine stain here with a clear organism that's not fucking referring to herpes, okay? Now, this is where you can get some points. Mucocarmine stain, some students will have heard of that before. You're like, oh, that's fucking great. This refers to the staining of cryptococcus neoformans meningitis. It's an obscure tertiary type of diagnostic modality in the sense that latex agglutination of the CSF for the cryptococcus antigen is the best test, followed by India ink prep, which is going to stain black everything except for the polysaccharide capsule of cryptococcus neoformans organism, okay? And of course, this is going to be a narrow-based budding. That's apparently what this is showing. I can just tell you verbally in terms of what you read. Um, they describe this as narrow-based budding. But mucocarmine staining, uh, you can think of this as like a, it's supposed to be a cherry red. I know this looks more magenta, but classically a reddish stain. That's a tertiary modality. So just kind of a short recapitulation before I go further. Immunocompromised patient with confusion you want to think of things like, could it be herpes encephalitis? Could it be a fungal infection, cryptococcus neoformans meningitis? The stain here, clearly this is going to be cryptococcus. Latex agglutination is best, followed by India Inc., followed by mucocarmine, okay? Now, we look at the answers and we say, how do we treat cryptococcus neoformans meningitis? The answer is going to be amphotericin B plus flucytosine, followed by a one-year taper of fluconazole. If you've seen some of my other questions, I've mentioned this regimen before. If the USMLE asks you for a single drug, the, the answer is going to be amphotericin B. This is our classic go-to agent for CNS infections, uh, di disseminated infections, okay? Obviously, there's, other, there's a time and place for other agents, okay? But amphotericin B is our classic default for CNS and disseminated infections, and especially the answer for cryptococcus neoformans meningitis. I've seen that on the NBME. So we look at these answers here. We say which one it ref reflects the mechanism of action of amphotericin B, and that's simply going to be ergosterol. You're like, hmm, ergosterol, really? Like, I thought ergosterol synthesis was azoles. Well, choice A, 14-D methylase, is the molecular target of azoles. So fluconazole, ketoconazole, itraconazole, etc., they target 14 methylase, which prevents the conversion of lenostrol to ergosterol. Now, ergosterol in the fungal cell membrane is the target of amphotericin B and also nystatin. Okay, so this is our answer, ergosterol, just cell membrane, amphotericin B, nystatin, 14 methylase. that's azoles, okay, lenostrol to ergosterol. Uh, squalene epoxidase, wrong fucking answer. That refers to terbinafine. This is this converts squalene to lenosterol, the precursor to ergosterol, as I just said. So uh, squalene epoxidase, uh, terbinafine, tubulin. This is microtubule. This uh, griseofulvin will target tubulin, in turn disrupting microtubule uh, synthesis. Okay, so that's your quick MOA uh, discussion. Obviously, I could make this a long clip. Um, it's more just touch and go as far as how detailed I want to make the discussion here. But fluke, but azoles are your typical go-to agents for most uh, fungal infections that are not overly severe. Um, oral fluconazole for uncomplicated fungal pneumonias, uh, candida esophagitis, okay? Don't confuse candida esophagitis with uh, nystatin mouthwash 
uh, for oropharyngeal oral thrush, okay? But candidal esophagitis, oral fluconazole. Fluconazole, oral fluconazole can be used for candidal skin infections as well. Itraconazole, oral, used for sporothrix schenke, okay? Uh, voriconazole can cause arrhythmia. That can be used for disseminated infections. If you don't use amphotericin B, uh, can be used for uh, aspergillus, in invasive aspergillosis, in particular invasive candidemia. Ketoconazole, antiandrogenic, okay, causes gynecomastia. Um, Beta-1,3 glucan synthase is caspofungin and or mica fungin. That's going to be your cell wall inhibitor, all right? And caspofungin, Sorry for the fucking ambulance outside right now. Hopefully that's not completely derailing the question, but why don't we just run with it? I'm not going to make a new fucking clip right now. So beta-1,3 glucan synthase, as I said, caspofungin, mycofungin, and those agents are used for um, invasive uh, candidemia and aspergillosis, similar to voriconazole, which I just mentioned before. But they US really, really likes caspofungin and mycofungin, and knowing that beta-1,3 glucan synthase uh, this is an enzyme important for carbohydrate synthesis. Amphotericin B is going to cause uh, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia. can also cause amphoterrible, which is a, chill, a, a chills, a hypersensitivity type of response. Um, and let's see, terbinafine, squalene epoxidase, terbinafine's oral. Oral is used for uh, onychomycosis nail bed infection and topical terbinafine used for tinea pedis classically. Oral griseofulvin used for tinea capitis, all right? So once again, just mini discussion here. Could make this a long fucking clip, longer than it's already been. Uh, so uh, just improvising as I need to. So that's it. And if you liked this, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.